Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very brilliant planet we call Earth, we welcome you to another exciting edition of our weekly address from the studios of Radio Biafra here in Israel. I welcome you wherever you may be, wherever you may be listening from, that this is a live presentation. It is a gospel of redemption, a gospel of hope which we have been mandated to preach and this very gospel we must preach it this very evening of the very first day of the very last month in this very year of 2018 as i welcome you i encourage you to welcome all those around you your friends your family your mother your sister your brother wherever they may be domiciled i recommend you contact them and ask them to approach any of the platforms through which this very gospel will be propagated this very evening. I welcome you. My name is Nnam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. And I serve these very wonderful people by the grace of Almighty Elohim, Chukukika Biyama Purumi Henine, whom we must dedicate this very evening presentation to before we proceed. Some of you are wondering what is happening. Some of you are perhaps confused and rightfully so. We are here to put the record straight. We are here to make you understand that this very journey is irreversible. What we are doing cannot be stopped. There is no human on the face of this very year that is capable of interrupting our relentless march towards our freedom. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter whatever position you may have held or in what esteem we may have regarded you in the past. On this very solemn march towards our freedom, if you are not able to stay on the path of the straight and narrow, you will be discarded and we will march on. Nothing is going to stop us. Nothing is going to phase us. Nothing can disrupt this very march towards that very promised land of Biafra. If you are a hardcore, we welcome you. If you are seeking to become one, we also welcome you. We ask you, as always, to get your pen and paper ready. This is the greatest platform, the greatest institution you will ever be privileged to listen to or to be lectured from. Before we proceed, we must pray. Chikwokika Biyama must accept our presence here. We are in the Holy Land of Israel, and we must do the needful, that needful that we must do is our prayer which we must make here on this very platform we have some people that came to see me from the united states of america uh, madam erwa is still here dr okoro left i think this morning and also we have one of our brothers who'll be joining us as we go on i may bring them in to say hello to all of you they came from very far to visit me and they are here with me in the studios of Radio Biafra here in the Holy Land of Israel. We must pray. We must give thanks to Elohim. Without whom we cannot function. And unto him we give every honor and every adoration. Wherever you are, I will ask you if you are in the spirit to remain so. If you are outside the spirit, we ask you to come into it. Because what we are preaching from here is a gospel of redemption. As directed by Chukukika Biyama himself in heaven. And this very gospel, we must preach it. Therefore, we must pray. We give thanks unto the O Elohim. For there is none like thee. There can never be any like thee. You are the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega. Our lives are in the palm of your hands. We commit all that we are unto thee. We have come as the ancients did before us, as our ancestors did before we came, to offer praise and adoration unto your holy name and no other. For we do not worship any idol. We do not worship anything born of a human being. We do not worship anything carved out of a tree. We do not bow down before anything molded with the hands of men. It is only thee that we worship. That is why we have come this very evening on this hallowed platform that you yourself created. 
to offer you unadulterated praise and to hand over to thee all that we can ever become because Biafra is yours. This very family of IPOB, you molded yourself. You decreed that IPOB must come. And now that we have come, that we may worship thee, Elohim, please accept our offering of praise and sacrifice unto your holy name because there is no other like thee. We will continue to adore thee. We will continue to worship thee. And as I said before, and I will reiterate, as we pray unto thee, that Biafra is your possession. We will sacrifice Biafra unto thee, that you may guide us in all that we do. You is only you that sees the hearts of men. If there is anything that we are hiding, if there is anything that we have concealed from our people, oh Elohim, you will judge us very harshly. But if our hands are clean, our hearts very pure, you will bless IPOB. And you will bless me. And you will bless my family because it's a promise from you. All our hope and our trust is upon thee. May your name be glorified. May you be exalted. May you, O Elohim, be praised. Now and forevermore we pray. He said, He said, He said, As I said, Madam Erua is here with me. I am not stopping anybody from coming to see me from far, but please, you must clear it with our coordinators here before you set out to come to see me. As most of you well know, I'm like an open book. I welcome people and I will continue to do so. I do not change my persona. I will not change who I am. Anybody that knows me will know I'm a very humble person. Sometimes some of our detractors, some of our enemies will wish to twist that very narrative, but we will not let them. I was born into a very humble home. So were my parents before me and so will I be and my children after me. That is how we are made and that is how we will continue to live. Anybody who is free to come. After all, uh, there was somebody that came from Enugu to see me here. He's an Assemblies of God um, church pastor. He came just a few minutes ago before we came on air to see me. And I welcome them. He's from Enugu State. He's from Ungo, as a matter of fact. And I wish that they remain blessed as they do the work that they have been called to do here in Israel. We must proceed. But before we go, please, can you give the microphone to... Madam Erewa, to say hello to the global family, the wonderful family of IPOB all over the world. We are immense. We are unstoppable. There is nothing anybody can say or do to stop us from restoring Biafra. Nobody can stop us. No human being, no flesh. When we say we are not voting, we are not voting. Understand it very clearly. We will crush and crumble the zoo to nothing. We will destroy it completely. That Biafra may come and Chukwoki Kabi may take his pride of place in our lives. Please, if Madam Erewa can address our people all over the world. Very briefly, just greet them. Go ahead. I salute you all, fellow freedom fighters, IPOB family member. I thank you. It's, so, it's such an honor to be in Israel to see our leader, Namdi Kanu, I am so blessed to be here. So I greet you all. With that, I want to just say a word or two in my language, in my Rubo language, just to greet my fellow Rubo, Ani Chekiri. Rubo Wado, Rubo Wado, Isi Wado, Isoko Mayerowa. Ijo aizo ishakiri mo ki adedo eh eh to ro fi biafra when e si giwe you know da ma gba ra na gba gbe ta urobo bi ko wa mo ma bi o ta na wa mo ma bi o o ta ri biafra ke di aba e ka di o vie re awusa fulani be kugbe iro e iku ori eh iyoroba bi ko mi ro won ajobi Please, this is the time where they are going to go around distributing 10,000 naira to all of you because election is coming. And then what is 10,000 naira going to do for you all? Ask them, where have they been? 
Your children are enslaved. You are enslaved. Ask them, where have they been? Why are they bringing 10,000 naira now? What is he going to do? Your child is out of school. You, uh, they are not in school. So, this time around, no voting. Don't vote. No voting. We want referendum. We want our Biafra. We want freedom. So, I greet you all. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Madam Erua. As most of you could have gleaned from that very short introduction and a, an encapsulation, more or less, of everything that we stand for, Biafra extends all the way to the great lands of Robo, of Ishekiri, of Isoko, of Ejo. We are all Biafra and we are marching to freedom because we thought humanity, what freedom was all about. We had democracy in the ancient lands of Biafra before the Greeks ever, ever, before the Greeks ever dreamt of having a democracy. We had it. And that is where we are heading to. We are going to teach the world what true federalism is all about. We are not going to subjugate. We will not relegate. There will be nothing like oppression in Biafra land. All will be free to worship to Koki Biama as they deem fit. We must continue. This is Radio Biafra. Welcome you once again, wherever you are. And there are some people who have not been able to do what I asked them to do. If you are residing or you are domiciled abroad, I want each and every one of you to ensure that your village, your clan, your hamlet is in receipt of this very broadcast. You can get them a satellite receiver. You can also purchase a transmitter or contact our deputy UGM4 so that we can install a transmitter in your village so that your people should be able to receive this very broadcast. We've gone very far. But we want to achieve 100% coverage on FM dial everywhere in Biafra land. We must proceed. The unmasking of Jubril must proceed. Regardless of what our enemies are attempting to do, all the diversionary tactics, all the lies and the deception, aided and abetted by Yoruba media, channels, television, propagating lies and falsehood. We come here to shred them to pieces, to rip them apart, and to expose them for what they are, that they are evil. They are evil. Somebody wrote to ask one of us to inform me to take it easy on Jibril. And I said to them, why should we? This who must fall Jubril will be exposed. I even noticed that AFP have joined them. There was a tweet message from AFP saying that till date they have not uncovered any evidence that Jubril is Buhari. And I began to wonder, perhaps they are blind, or perhaps they, their, their stated purpose of investigative journalism have somehow abandoned them. They are not able to face the truth because of bribery and corruption. Some of you don't know that journalists can be bought, that some diplomats in the zoo called Nigeria have been bought over a long time ago with oil money to keep feeding lies to their host countries. Very soon, they will be exposed and shamed for good because they failed to speak the truth. This evening, we will continue our expose. I am asking each and every one of you, as it is with IPOB, the thing about IPOB that I love so much is that we are not like other useless African people, and we can never be. I make no apologies about that at all. Where we come from, from a very early age, we teach you how to reason properly. Sadly, other people have failed to reason. That is why Africa is so poor and wretched. Backwards, poor and wretched. 
because we black Africans do not reason. I have only one question for the few Yoruba journalists that have been feigning ignorance about all the evidence that we've amassed against Jubril of Sudan. How can somebody be taller in 2015 than, say, for instance, Saraki, and all of a sudden he's now shorter? And you don't think there is something wrong? Maybe because I'm a black African man, and as you well know, it's just like asking Jesus to come back as a black man. Nobody will follow him. That is a fact of life. The same thing is happening now. Unless a white man stands up somewhere to say that what Nam the Khan is saying is true, a sizable number of black people will not believe because I'm a black person like them. And we don't believe that anything good can come out of a black person. That is the very simple truth. It sounds very painful, but that is the truth. That is why until a white man confers some kind of legitimacy upon a black man or a black woman, nobody listens to them. Nobody. Can you imagine if Chimamanda were to be, should I say, recommended by a black literary agent? Do you know what will happen to her? She will sink into oblivion because she's mixing with white people and the white people are the ones now telling you that this, your sister, can write very well. That is why we all picked interest. Had Chino Achebe's books not made it all over the world as a bestseller, perhaps we would not have recognized him. Because we are black, that is the way we are made, that is the way we reason, and that is why we are very poor and wretched. And may Chukwoke Kabiyama have mercy upon us. We must proceed this very evening because the truth must be preached. What we are doing here is to enlighten humanity. To bring this very gospel to light that Biafra may come in truth and in every honesty. I am a two and see I don't tell lies. Everything you hear from me is the truth. I am not, I cannot be afraid of anybody born by a woman. I don't give a toss who you are. I tell you the truth. And that is what we preach here. People should stop second guessing us and trying to find out what I'm thinking. I am as consistent as the Northern Star. I do not change. If the zoo cannot buy me when I was in prison, if all their offers did not move me, there is nothing anybody is going to do to compel me to alter course. We are marching full steam ahead to election boycott until they give us what we want. If they want us to boycott elections, then give us a date for a referendum. As simple as that. If you don't have it, please don't even bother talking to us. This is Radio Biafra. In the zoo, they are pretending nothing is happening. Some of them have gone to the lengths of trying to counter what we are saying. They fabricate their own lies. They drown in their own lies. They keep deceiving themselves in the zoo. That jubilee is somehow, Buhari. No wonder blacks are useless. But here, we are Radio Biafra. We preach this very gospel that Biafra may come. And the IPOB is that is funding this very movement that is propelling it by the grace of the Almighty are the most enlightened and educated people in Africa. Let me not say the world. And that is why Biafra is going to come. We are going to dismantle the lies of Lai Muhammad and his brother. There was one Yoruba senator, very mischievous and a lying toad. He said he's a, he's a he said he holds a doctorate degree in, in genetics. Has anyone heard about the man before? He's a Yoruba senator. Do you see how clever they are? This Yoruba senator said that nobody can clone a 75-year-old. Lai Mohammed echoed the same sentiment. If you are not intelligent enough, you will think that a Namde Kano said that Buhari was cloned into Jubril. That wasn't what I said. I said that Jubril is an impostor. They brought him in to act and behave like the dead Buhari. I never said he was cloned. But you see how clever these liars are, like Lai Muhammad and the entire zoo, because Nigerians are liars by nature. A Nigerian is a liar. The worst thing you can ever encounter, apart from the devil, is a Nigerian. 
evil people that lie, that pretend that what they are looking at is no longer real. They were there when Osun elections were rigged. They were there when they rigged the elections. Everybody saw it live with their own eyes and said, without any fundamental restructuring of the electoral system, we will not vote. All of a sudden they are going to vote, they have forgotten. But we have not forgotten. I don't forget. I learn and I proceed. That is how IPOB is. We always learn and we march on. We never go back to go, uh, perhaps you try and repeat the same mistakes of the past. No, we don't do that. We only move ahead. That is why we are the most successful, the largest mass political movement anywhere on this earth. IPOB is number one in the whole world. Because there is something unique and special about us. And <laughs> you will hear what is going to happen very soon. Just bear with me. We must dismantle these lies, this narrative of cloning. I never said that Jubril was cloned. Never, ever, ever. From inception, I have said I will expose Jubril to the very unreasonable and unthinking populace. Anybody you call a Nigerian cannot reason properly. I keep saying it and I will maintain it. Nigeria is the fictional creation of the British. God did not create Nigeria. Allow me to repeat. God did not create Nigeria. Nigeria was created by Frederick Lugard and the girlfriend Flora Shaw. Not by God. Anybody telling you that God created Nigeria, the person is deceiving you, the person is lying, and the person can never ever be redeemed. I can assure you of that. Do you know how you can tell how if God made a country or nation or not? Simply ask yourself this question. Who created Britain? Who created Russia? Who created France? Who created Denmark? No single person ever did. It's a collection of will. An aggregation of values that then fuse together to form a value system. Who created Saudi Arabia? It's only Chukwu Abiyama in heaven that can create a nation and nations emerge as a result of an organic process of diffusion of ideas, cultures, and values. As simple as that. I hear the Fulani people saying like the Sultan of Sokoto and um, on some occasions um, Jibril and the Fulanese that brought him into power. That God created this Nigeria. You must be a fool to think that way. Because all the countries in sub-Saharan Africa, with the exception of Ethiopia, we are the creation of Europeans, not God. That is why they are your God anyway, for some of you. But not for us, because we only worship Chukoki Kabiyama here. We don't worship any other person apart from Elohim himself in heaven. Therefore, we, I don't care if you hate us, if you don't, that is your business. Is not going to stop us from doing what we are doing. It can never stop IPOB from restoring Biafra. Therefore, we must proceed. There has been this very puerile attempt to divert <laughs> this very explanation that we're presenting to the whole world. Uh, we've always said that uh, Jubril is an impersonator. That's what we said. Not a cloned version of Buhari. What they are cloning about Buhari is the ear. You know the ear at the back of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the mouse. That is what they are cloning. Because when they cut out the ear, they can now cut it to the shape of the dead Buhari. Have you noticed how they never photographed the left ear? Have you noticed it, all of you? They never, ever allow you to get close. The idiot went to Medugri. He was standing almost three miles away from the soldiers. Three miles away. When he went to the hospital, they cleverly positioned him so that a useless plank... They tied on the bed will cover the left ear. And uh, somebody, a Yoruba journalist, will come to me and say, Oh, but there is no evidence. And I keep wondering, haven't they listened to this very broadcast from the time I started making it from here in Israel? 
Have they not listened to it, I ask? Those in the pay of APC, like Channels TV and a few other media houses who are so hungry that they sell their conscience, will accept this very simple fact that at no time have I said that Buhari was cloned. I said they brought in an impostor, an actor from Sudan, Jubril Aminu al Sudani. That's his name, till tomorrow. And I'm very grateful that the Sudanese government are doing something about it, investigating this very matter. There is a plan and orchestrated disinformation championed by corrupt segments of the media. They know the truth, but they lie. I asked people, have you seen the, the, the Jubril that escorted Aisha to the launch of APC? Is that man Buhari to anybody alive? I ask you. Does that man look like Buhari to any of you? A simple question. After, oh, oh he doesn't look like Buhari, uh, but I think uh, uh, Buhari is still alive. You, you must be a fool. That means that your eyesight is not working properly. And I think I tweeted it that those who cannot discern or make out the very physical, facial differences between Jubril and Buhari, you are in need of an eyeglass, I tell you. Because if you go there, you will be able to see it. The present state of absurdity and confusion in the zoo, arising from the consistent and relentless pursuit of the truth, on this radio Biafra is what will unravel the zoo. Allow us we know what we are doing. We want to prove to the whole world, I want to prove to humanity that Nigeria is a bundle of lies and that Nigerians are liars by nature. And the worst part of it, they don't have the liver. They don't have the conscience to rise up and say that evil is evil. That is why you are owing teachers for two years. You are owing nurses for eight months. And the same nurse will go out and say, Oh yes, we are going to vote. But the people you voted for are the ones owing you. They will never pay you your salary. Because they know you are stupid. They know if they call for an election, you will vote. They know how useless you are. That is why they owe you your money. They won't give it to you. Because they know you're stupid. Ask yourself, all of you want to go to America, you want American visa, you want French visa, you want to even travel to Russia. Ask yourselves, when their leaders were as bad as Jubril and uh, uh, all the sultan, all these idiots that occupy positions in the zoo, do you think that the zoo is the first place on this earth where you've had corrupt rulers? No. It was everywhere all over the world. In Europe. Do you know what the people did? Their rulers came to bribe them. Oh, why don't you do this for us? Oh, why don't you, do, why, don't, why don't you allow me to do this for you or to do that for you? Do you know what the people did? They said, no. We are going to change you and change the system that produced the likes of you. Do you see where Europeans are different from black African people? Do you see where even Latinos in South America that they jail any corrupt leader in Brazil, you're going to jail. You go, they imprison you. But you have people as corrupt as Buhari was before he died. As corrupt as Aisha Buhari is. Some of you don't know this. Aisha Buhari is in the oil business. Is she an engineer? Have any of you asked yourself how come Aisha is a multi-billionaire from oil business? The wife of the dead Buhari. You will not ask yourself that question because you are black. You don't reason very well. There is something wrong with your brain. It doesn't function properly. Let me tell you something. You see Britain. In Britain, people revolted against a corrupt leadership. King Charles was beheaded by Oliver Cromwell. In France, the same thing. King Louis and Marie Antoinette were beheaded. The people said enough is enough. But have you noticed, even Arabs, Remember the Arab Spring? Arab said enough is enough. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that black African people are suffering and they are smiling? Because they are useless. 
because their brain doesn't work properly. But in IPOB, our brain functions very well. They, say, oh, they insult elders. If an elder is a complete idiot and a pedophile, we will sack you because you are nobody. You are evil. Listen to your elders. How old is Emmanuel Macron? How old is the Austrian Prime Minister? Our last born, Chichi one one is older than the Austrian Prime Minister. And you're suffering and you're smiling. And when they tell you, go and get your PVC, you foolishly and hopelessly and idiot idiotically go and polish it. You want to go and vote because you're stupid. You don't want your life to change. We have sacrificed so much that we may show you the way. But anyway, some of you are black. They say people are complaining in the U.S. That black Americans are complaining in the U.S. But the is here. If you go to U.S., you will tell them that you met in Namdekan in Israel. And that I said that we black people will reason like idiots. We don't have brain. Tell them that's what I said. If they are upset, they should change their way of reasoning. We must change our way of reasoning. Or else, you know one thing about it is that when wise listen to what I preach, they keep saying that he's saying something important. That if his people were to listen to him, there will be a lot of change. Not just in Biafra, but the whole of Africa. But you want me to pamper you, to tell you, oh no, you're intelligent, you're smart, you're the... you are none of those. If they can go to Sudan and bring in an imposter to come and rule you, and you cannot even tell that the old Buhari is taller than this nonsense you have now, then uh, you, <laughs> I feel sorry for all of you. Not IPOB because we are very smart. Very, very smart. We must continue. These lies championed by channels, television, and, uh, and their lies. AP, uh, AFP, the Associated, is it Ajans French Press? Ajans French Press. AFP, they've joined them. And they've collected their own share of the money. They think, you know, I'm not afraid of anybody. I don't care who you are. If you like, uh, be the most powerful, most influential media group in the world, I don't give a damn. The coming of Biafra is in the hands of Chukuki Kabiyama, not in the hands of man. And that is where it's going to come. So when I ask you to follow me to the temple to go and pray, you will join me. Because I told you that Chukuki Kabiyama will give us Biafra, and he did. We must proceed. Some of them think that black Africa is devoid of conscience and that we have no common sense. So any rubbish can go. <laughs> but I'm going to shock them. We have placed the zoo in a very uncomfortable place. What they have done is to resort to whole scale bribery. They must bribe the journalists all over the world to keep writing nonsense. Did you see the picture of Jibril today traveling to, they say he's going to Poland. Others oh, are in, uh, in Brazil for G20. They say he himself is going to Poland for, for climate change. <laughs> oh, zoo. I don't want to go into the lecture of climate change and the idiocy of Nigeria's participation in anything that may lead to the reduction of carbon emission or greenhouse gases. Do you know why? Because there is no electricity in the zoo. Everybody has a generator that either burns diesel or burn um, um, the premium motor which is fuel. Petrol. And the people attending international climate change to see how the world can reduce global emission. They are the ones importing third-rate generators from Japan. Every house. You've heard about smoke inhalation killing a lot of families from tiny generators. So I keep asking myself, what, of what contribution will the zoo make in Poland? When back where you come from, everybody has a generator generating tons and tons of carbon every blessed day. I, 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 hey. I don't know what brought me to Africa. I think um, Chukwa Bema should have made me to become maybe a tree in a forest. When they cut me down, at least they can make center table with me and that will be useful. I, sometimes, I don't, I, don't some of you think at all what you're doing in Africa? You are the number one contributor to, to carbon emission. You, you, you. All of you have generators. Everybody has generators in the zoo. And you are attending a conference on how to reduce carbon emission. So let me ask you. So when you come back, you tell us now to stop using generators? I, I, I don't understand it. 
And they say he's, he's going to Poland. And, and people are, are waving him off. We will get Biafra and we will show them how things are done. Osibajo is a coward. That is why he's not the president. Osibajo is a complete fool. That is why he is not the president of the zoo. Dora Kunyili sacrificed her life that Jonathan may become the president. So when next somebody is saying, uh, uh, they are evil and, and we are a what have they done for us? Tell the idiot that Dora Kunyili sacrificed herself that Jonathan may become the president of the zoo. Without what she did, nobody had the metal. They did not have it inside them to speak the truth until the raccoon came and told everybody the truth. The young girl was dead. What they are doing now, they perfected it. Are you telling me that none of you have seen Dora Cornelius' uh, video? We are going to play it, the audio, so you can hear it. How she made it possible for Jonathan to become the president. They were all cowards. All cowards, all of them. It took one strong Biafran woman to stand up and say enough is enough before they gave way for Jonathan. When Buhari died, oh dear, <laughs> imagine asking Yosibaja to go and um, instigate somebody to say uh, Buhari is dead. They threatened all of them. If anything had happened to Buhari, these are senators and legislators saying if anything had happened to Buhari, they will kill everybody in Abuja. And some of you are saying you are proud Nigerians. I'm a proud Nigerian. May, may the good Lord have mercy upon your soul because, I don't know, you're beneath contempt. You're beneath contempt. In a move that betrays the shallowness of the zoo media and the gangsters in Asa Rock, uh, Lai Muhammad and all the rest of them, the stupid introduction of cloning into the narrative was a deliberate ploy to confuse you. Because they know you're black, you'll be confused. Do you know why? Yoruba don't want Nigeria to break. You don't know that? So now let me tell you. Yoruba people do not want Nigeria to break. Because if Nigeria breaks, where would they get free oil from? From where? Let me ask you. Where are all those importing through Apapa Seaport? Who will import from there? All of you will remember also Abiola. I'm sure you remembered it. Those of you... I mean, unfortunate enough to be left in Lagos. When the Osa Abiola happened, when people left Lagos, when June 12th was annulled, we'll testify that Lagos turned into a ghost town. Lagos became empty overnight because Biafrans left following the annulment of the June 12th elections. Yoruba people will not ever, 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 ever come out to say that Buhari is dead. And that that man there is Jibril. Never! They don't want Nigeria. Forget all the nonsense. They don't want Nigeria to break. Never! They don't. They don't want it. And they control the media. Is what they tell you that you're going to listen. Is what they tell you that you're going to absorb. That is what you're going to consume. Is anything they tell you. Because they control the media. They control you. Look at the way they made Peter B to appear as if they're doing evil people a favor. You know, if you, that, that was what whites used to do. Oh, this is the first black man to work in our office. Oh, this is the first black man to, to empty those bin for us. Oh, this is the first black man. And there'll be snapping picture with him. And you as a black person, as foolish as you are, you'll be clapping. Oh, this man is the first black man to write his name very well, to spell his name very well. Is the first black man to do this. The first black man to do that. When they gave you Obama, they made it appear as if they are doing you a favor. The same way, look at Peter Obi. As if not all of you own Nigeria. It's only them. If they give you anything, you should be grateful for it. But meanwhile, it is from one Fulani to the other. Either Atiku or Buhari, they are all Fulani. But you, that they appointed somebody from your side, uh, just a candidate. He hasn't even won yet. You are made to feel as if you, you should be grateful to God that remembered you. Do you see how they control your mind? Do you see why IPOB is special? You cannot control our mind because we reason and we ask questions. And most of our questions, the zoo cannot even answer. We are proceeding because the zoo must collapse, it must fall. If you say you're a Nigerian, may the good Lord have mercy upon your soul. It means you're a liar, you're a deceiver, you're a cheat. 
and you're a coward. You cannot even speak the truth because you don't know what truth is all about and can never ever know. For the sake of clarity and total removal of ambiguity, there was never a time I insinuated, I implied that Jubril was cloned. I never said that. They went and brought, I hope, Amaka is listening, I hope, she can post these pictures. You see how foolish they are. I posted some pictures on my timeline. In fact, I tweeted it. A left-handed Buhari versus a right-handed um, Jubril. You know what they did? They brought the pictures of Trump and Obama and reversed it. Do you see how stupid they are? You know the lapel pinup that you have. It could be a flag. It could be anything. Anywhere you go in the world, they put the pin on the left breast, on the lapel, on the left side of the suit. That's why they wear it. Everybody in the world, no matter how primitive you are. They went and reversed it. And it moved from the left to the right. They said, oh, can't you see what they did? They mirrored the picture. They reversed it. So it is the same person. They just reversed it. Do you see how foolish they are? And I asked somebody to ask them, can you show me any other picture in the world where you wear your pinup on the right-hand side of your suit? Anywhere in the world. And they couldn't. So how come Obama is now wearing his wedding band, his wedding ring, on his right hand? Which man wears wedding ring on the right hand? Do you see how foolish they are? But uh, some of you are black. You say, oh, you say, oh, yeah, 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 this is it. Oh, it's, it's, that was what they did. Because you don't have an investigative mindset. You don't investigate what you're told. Use your common sense. Use your tiny black brain, whatever is left of it, to be able to reason. Perhaps you will be on the same page with IPOB. It must be mentioned that the mastermind of this fraud of Jibril, the Zabakiari, has anyone seen him recently? Hey, we don't know who is dead anymore. The Zabakiari is dead. And we cannot see the one that brought Jibril. Nobody knows what's happening anymore. I just don't know. Maybe they're preparing him with extensive plastic surgery and makeup so he can come out to speak full food before the elections. Maybe. The reason behind all the evil in the north, in Abuja, is control of oil and gas resources. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. Some of you hear about Fulani people becoming millionaires overnight, like uh, Dangote. Dangote is a rich man, isn't he? Can anybody remember who he was before he became a multimillionaire or multi-billionaire? What was he doing 20 years ago, 30 years ago, apart from collecting money from Fulani junters in power? Basically doing um, um, that's what it is. It's money laundering. That's what he was doing. Dangote is a money launderer. Nothing more, nothing less. They need to maintain that level of lifestyle and subjugate other people by ensuring they have total and dominant control of the oil and gas industry. Why do you think uh, Buhari made himself the petroleum minister? How, ask yourself this question. How did Aisha Buhari become involved in Halliburton scandal? Where did she study petroleum engineering? To have any business to do with oil and gas to the point of bribing Halliburton or accepting bribe from Halliburton. But you see, I don't want to get some of you thinking too hard this evening because um, I don't know. We all need to be educated. I don't feel sorry for myself. I've said this before and I won't. I will not stop criticizing myself until I become better. You see, that is why what people say about me don't faze me. I am much more harder on myself than anything anybody can say from anywhere. I can assure you of that. I can assure you of that. We must continue. We must continue. This is Radio Biafra. If you're joining us for the very first time, 
you are blessed because here you will hear the unadulterated truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth we are dear friends we are not going to lose focus we are IPOB. It doesn't matter. You know, sometimes people, I say somebody's name on radio, Biafra, or we say, oh, we respect some sort of person, and the next day the zoo will go to that person, give them money to say some nonsense against our IPOB, or against the Namdekano. You must all be used to it. This is called freedom fighting. Fighting. We don't have guns or, or ammunition. No. We don't have bullets. No. No knives, no machete, nothing. Not even pen knife. But we are involved in freedom fighting. Don't expect your enemies to fold their arms and just be waiting for you to walk over them. Anybody I mention on Radio Biafra, anybody that I say is close to me, they go to that very person, they give them money, they bribe them, they promise them heaven and earth to come out and start speaking from the other side of the mouth. All of you must get used to it. And when you see such nonsense, you simply move on. Ignore them, because they are trying to distract you from what you are supposed to be doing. So we must move on, because this very gospel must be preached. Chukwoki Biama will bear us witness always, because we always win. We are Radio Biafra. Every time we win, there is nothing anybody can do about it. They can arrest us all they like. They went to nail we arrested everybody. The police came where we were conducting a peaceful march inside our own market. Inside, we didn't go to 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 Buzo or to to uh, Funtua. In our own home, Newi, in our own place, distributing leaflets and flyers, marching as we usually do. The Fulani police commissioner called his people, asked them to come and start shooting at us. They are the ones that came uninvited. They shot at us. And they came back that same evening for mass arrest. Do you know why they are doing it? Because they know we will not fight back. They know that our hanes and niyamu don't do shit. All the armed robbers and the and the criminals and the ritualists in our hanes and the and the world governors they will turn a blind eye. As this nonsense is happening, a new terrorist group is being formed in Sokoto. Nobody is going there to shoot at them. They went to confront. They they went is it uh, uh, or whatever rubbish they call the place where the the, the army battalion where where. Metale, is that correct? I don't know how to pronounce those names. You must forgive me. Boko Haram came and dealt with them. And some of them ran away. These are soldiers with guns. Do you understand what I'm saying? These are armed, you know, remember when it comes to IPOB, you see Burata, they are armed, they are well trained, they are Nigerian soldiers. We are going there. You see Yoruba Iraq on the internet saying, oh, our army is going there. Our troops. Going to see Amafara to fight with with armored cars and uh, anti personnel uh, uh, carriers and two air force air force jets bombers to come and kill me and my family. Do you know that this same brilliant, powerful army that Boko Haram met them and they were running and they had guns, they had armored tank, they had everything. Now, I keep saying to the zoo and their supporters, if you are running away from illiterate, badly educated Alamajiri carrying AK-47, when IPOB decides to go violent, how can you cope? I keep asking them. No, nobody can answer this question. You saw during Operation Pattern Dance, they went and brought one uh, baby snake and gave to, to Buratai. He wrapped his round and around the snake as a hard man. Ordinary Boko Haram came and they were all running. How can you be running with a rifle? These are people that came to Isiyama Afra to kill everybody. They came to Newi to arrest us because Igbo governors. When I told you not to go out to vote for that drunkard, that idiot. Anambra governor now, they gave the governorship to Will Obiano. Did you listen? 
Do you, do you think a Fulani soldier, uh, a Fulani policeman will give the order to come to Newey Market and be shooting at people without the knowledge of Obiano? Is that what you're telling me? Of course, Obiano you. The same Obiano is now supporting Jubril. This is the problem we have in our land. When you call evil for what it is, they say you disrespect elders. Everybody can remember that when Buhari was alive, he was openly defending Boko Haram that was busy killing people. An attack on Boko Haram is an attack against the North. IPOB is not carrying any arms. We have not killed anybody. None of them. None of them that some fools are telling us to respect. None of them came out to defend IPOB. But they go to the same meeting with these people defending Boko Haram, defending Fulani headsmen. When Fulani headsmen came to Anambra to kill us, surprise, surprise, this Fulani police commissioner never sent one policeman to go and defend our villages. I want people to listen very carefully and understand what I'm saying, why I am angry with some of these people. Talking nonsense all the time. You know, you know in a land of hunger, any idiot can come out to say whatever rubbish they like. Any fool can come out and say whatever nonsense they like. I am asking the Anambra State Police Commissioner that sends um, his policemen to go to Newi to shoot at people conducting a peaceful evangelism. This Anambra Police Commissioner, Mr. Police Commissioner, when your full and brothers were in Anambra raping women, rampaging and killing people in their farms, what did you do? The answer is nothing. But you know, some of these are uh, some of our people born in Mandiam Lagos, and Abuja. Answering your phone or whatever it is that they ask me in the north and Yoruba land. This is why you say I insult you. When I say you cannot reason properly, you say I insult you. Wouldn't the question be why are you attacking innocent people in the Navy market? When you have fallen headsmen killing people all over the place. When you have a brand new terrorist group in Sokoto. When you can't even defeat Boko Haram. But you know, I don't know what is happening. It's, maybe it's the zoo education system. Instead of people to ask very simple questions as to why things are the way they are. They say to IPOB, Oh, but you shouldn't have gone out to evangelize. And when I ask them why are they saying that, they say it's because uh, a fallen man said so. You shouldn't go out to evangelize because uh, a Fulani, you know, some of them are so terrified of, of Fulani people. Perhaps I'm the only person that uh, the Fulani is afraid of. And they know because if you hate me, I hate you twice more than you hate me. Anybody pretending that they love one Nigeria and in that process try to put down Biafra or IPOB, I will, I will come after you. It's as simple as that. If you hate me, I hate you back. Illegal arrest everywhere and detention of IPOB family members. This time around, they were unlucky. They picked up traders. Now, the traders in the Newey market can see what we are suffering. They will say you, they'll arrest you for no reason. They won't tell anybody. They just take you. Sometimes they take you to Abuja or they kill you and they, they dump you in a, in a bottle pit. Will Ahanese say anything? Will your so called useless governor say anything? Will another idiot somewhere in Abuja or Lagos answering to Ahanese this or that or Igbo this or that say anything? The answer is no. That is how selfish and foolish some of them are. They are arrested innocent traders at Nnewi and lock them up with the help of Igbo politicians. You don't know that? Anybody, they all want to do what they can do to get along, to have a house in Abuja, be able to buy private jets, and be flying all over the elite. Both the educated and the uneducated. They tell you, oh, we are the elite. What makes you an elite? Okay, you have a Fulani friend, or a political godfather in the Fulani land. And that recommended you for an appointment in somebody's government. And because of that, all of a sudden you become an elite. Do you see how messed up we are in our brains? All of them. When I look at Imo State, I pity the people of Imo State. Look at your elites now in Imo State. Ndiyoshi, Ndiyoshi throughout. Every governorship candidate in Imo State. Chineke, Nambere, Mebere. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
Going back to Nay, we they lock up our people. Let me tell them something. Ask any IEPUB family member who's ever been to prison before. Once you take us to prison, we become more hardened than we ever were before. There is nobody who has ever been to prison. Some of us two, three times. Then you ask, oh, are you going to give up on IPOB? They will tell you you're dreaming. It makes us to become more hardened. If you don't know, we must tell you. You must release those traders or it will escalate. Will you be no? He's now having fun. Buying even more expensive brandy and whiskey to get drunk all he likes because he has access to allocation money. And what has he done with it? Nothing. Prison yard can never guarantee Nigeria's unity. It's impossible. Go and ask anywhere in the world. Locking up people in prison can never guarantee you any form of national cohesion or unity. People with determination to be free cannot be stopped. We are determined that we can never ever be stopped. It is impossible. Not now. Not tomorrow. Not ever. You can never stop IPUB. Never ever ever. More than 5 million people died in Biafra during the war. Before the war and even after the war. Awolowo or Bafemi Awolowo stole all our money. Or Bafemi or Bafemi Awolowo stole all our money. Our people know this and they don't speak the truth. Gave us 20, 20 pounds each family. Where was the rest of the money? Awolowo took it. Am I, am I lying? Am I lying? I will want to call the money. If you ask them, they say, oh no, you cannot speak the truth because some of us now, we were born in Yoruba land. Uh, me and Tunde, we are friends. Because of that, you cannot speak the truth. How sad. How very, very sad it is. A new Islamic terror group is now functioning full time in Sokoto. You will not hear one Awosa, Fulani, position, leader, elder, come out to castigate this group. If it is an, a Biafran group, you will see a Biafran politician. He will chat a plane. He will volunteer himself to sabotage them. That is here. As Wood said in public, <laughs> that he has sabotaged Biafra before. He will sabotage it again. And people are still calling him an elder. Do you see how foolish people are? Ask yourself this question. Why is it that from Boko Haram to Fulani Headsmen to this new one now? I don't, what, what, what's their name again? I don't know what they, 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 they were. They came to a place called Tangaza Government in Sokoto. Have you heard of any Fulani man coming out in the papers to say, oh, we must keep Nigeria one. Who are these? We'll go and kill them. But it was only Niamwood and the Igbo governors that went to Abuja and persuaded Abuja to come and kill me and kill my people. Can you believe that? It was them that went to Abuja and said, come and kill them for us. They want to stop us from, from being elite. But I'm asking all of you tonight, this new terrorist group in Sokoto, Fulani headsmen, supported by every Fulani man, to expand Islam and Fulani culture through the Middle Belt and Boko Haram. Have you heard of anybody coming out to criticize them? Before Buhari died, was Buhari not coming out openly to defend Boko Haram? Was Buhari not nominated by Boko Haram as their chief negotiator? Are people that stupid that they cannot reason? No, I'm not coming here in Africa, I'm telling you the truth. So it's unbelievable. The way we reason is, is just beyond me. There is nothing about the reasoning capacity of a black person that convinces me that we are human beings. I'm telling you the truth. Is that what I'm saying here, lies? Did Buhari not defend Boko Haram? We are Boko Haram not killing evil people in the north. Remember the Madala bombing? Have you forgotten? Catholic Samaka's Catholic Church? Did any Igbo man have the courage to stand up and speak against Boko Haram? The answer is no. But look at IPOB. You, they queue up. They buy up acres of newspaper uh, page, uh, columns and, and pages. To write against IPOB, to write against the Namdekan, that has come to save them. I have come to save them from their stupidity and ignorance. To save them. I have come to save them from their own stupidity. Once you can make them minister, 
give jobs to their family, their daughters and their sons and their wives. They're okay. They're fine. While the rest of the people suffer. People are suffering every blessed day. In our own land, the army can come to your home and arrest you. The police can come to your home and arrest you and nobody will say anything. You rot in jail or you die. Nobody will say anything. But Boko Haram, they're releasing them, giving them uniform, giving them guns to join the army. Does it, don't people see all these things? We are now here and there in our world. Don't people see? Now you know why we are different from the others. They are there. All those silly and stupid evil men and Biafrans at large, I must say, that call themselves leaders and, the, and uh, elites. Like some of the fools we have in Ohanes and Southeast governors. Can they copy something from their northern counterparts? Have you heard of any northern governor coming out to ask the government to come and kill people in their area? The only Igbo governors. And they say they are the elite. And some of you ignorantly even listen to them. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad. The idiots we have in Biafra land claiming they are leaders, they have sold their conscience. They have no love for you and they have no regard for you. Ask them, in all the years they've been existing, what have they done for you? The answer is nothing. Absolutely nothing. But they claim they are your leaders. You are telling me that in the north or Yoruba land, you will go to a market dominated by Yoruba people and you arrest people because oh, that OPC was here. So you go and you arrest people. Is that possible in Yoruba land? Ordinary Yoruba. Is that possible? So when you say that Yorubans respect their elders or their leaders because their leaders do something for them in return, you will see the way they will mourn Dr. Fashion. The way they will accord him respect and money. He fought for Yoruba interest. If it is somewhere in Biafra land, they will go and connive. They will tell you, oh, I have my friend. He is the commander of the 82 division. I will convince him to come with his men. As Iwanya did when Abacha was alive. Some of you will know the story. But I won't go into it tonight. That will be for some other day. We reject marginalization and injustice. We reject Nigeria implicitly. Everything about the zoo, we reject. If you're a Nigerian, you're on your own. You can never be my friend. Biafra is our identity. Anybody who is uncomfortable with our quest for freedom is welcome to remain in slavery. I will say, for any people, you can come and take a Nyanwood and the world governors. Take them to the north. And tie a chain around their neck. And the bandage on their head. Because they want to serve you. They are your loyal servants. And they will serve you very well. Very, very well. We, IPOB, every hardcore Biafran must not lose focus. Because our referendum must come. And it will be a total success. We must bear in mind that the charade they call elections in the zoo must be totally boycotted. We have nothing to do with elections in the zoo, especially the presidential elections. We are not going to vote. Nothing is more important than Biafra restoration. All the innocent traders arrested in Inewi and locked up. And with the help of evil politicians, we'll only harden our resolve. And like play, like play, we'll shut down the whole of Biafra land. Very soon, we will shut down the whole of Biafra land. <clears throat> this is Radio Biafra. If you're joining us for the very first time, we welcome you. Very, very shortly, we shall be playing for you the very clip that made it possible for Jonathan. For Jonathan to become the president. That is something that nobody had the temerity nor the courage to do. And that is why Jubril is still in power. Anybody or group of persons trying to second guess me or what IPOB will do in the coming weeks and months is an insincere and dishonest person. Anybody that knows me will know that I do not change, neither does IPOB. 
and we are going to destroy the zoo with the very simple truth and nothing but the truth. If any person is of the opinion that sometime in the future that I will change things, that person needs to see a doctor because his brain is not correct or her brain is not correct. IPOB is boycotting elections 100%. If you want IPOB to vote for anybody, then ask them to agree to our demand, which is a referendum. And that is what we are going to demand, and that's what we're going to get, because that is the right way to proceed. Why would any sensible human being want to vote in Nigeria anyway? When everything in Nigeria is evil, pure evil. Your average Nigerian is a liar, a deceiver, and a cheat. What you have is government of liars, by liars, and for liars. Is that what governance and democracy is all about? But that is what you have in the zoo. People are lying to you and deceiving you. They don't pay you your salaries. Your life is miserable. Millions have lost their jobs. You have no good roads. No viable infrastructure. No electricity. You have absolutely nothing. And you wake up in the morning and you say, I am a proud Nigerian. You are a proud idiot, I must say. The government will announce an increase in salary. Ask anybody you know who is a policeman. Have they received the salary increase? Have they received it? But they announced it. Everybody carried it. All the Yoruba papers carried it. Increase in uh, police salary. Has any of them received anything till date? The answer is a capital no. People are committing suicide in their dozens. People can no longer feed their families. And you're telling me that your, your most pressing need right now is to go and vote. Who are you going to vote for? Is it not the same people that you voted for before? What you need is a total revolution. If you want me to expand this quest to redeem Biafrans, to encompass other people, they must have a revolutionary mindset. When I was in prison, people were begging me, oh, why don't you, why are you so concerned about Biafra alone? Why don't you try and save other people too? The same problems you have in Biafra, you have in the West, you have in the Midwest, you have in the North. And I said to them, when you develop a very healthy appreciation of the need for a revolution in Nigeria, perhaps we might extend what we are doing to cover those places. If you're not prepared for a revolution, please don't even bother coming out or saying anything. People are dying. People go to sleep hungry in the night. And you're telling me you are in a country where people have conscience. No, they don't. And they never will. Anybody that goes out to vote, or you are even contemplating to vote, you must know that your life is finished. That you have nothing else to offer. How do you hope to bring about a revolution when the only thing that can save everybody is election boycott? If you do not boycott elections, how can you compel politicians to listen to you? How, I ask you, how will you be able to effect any lasting or meaningful change? This fraudulent Jubril Buhari regime if you have forgotten, we must remind all of you. They collected one billion dollars to buy equipment. Is that correct? From the excess crude account. That's what I told you. They don't produce anything. They don't go to work apart from moving cattle from place to place. They do nothing. All they want is to sell oil and gas and import everything else out of it. Is it true that Buratai said... You must forgive me, I had a sip of orange juice. And we must proceed. You know here we don't hide anything. Everything is out in the open. Burata gave an interview and said that the army did not have enough equipment to fight Boko Haram. Is that not correct? Is that what he said? Can somebody therefore ask Burata and the Fulani Kabal that are still to their hearts content on a daily basis. What did you do with the one billion dollars excess crude account money that you collected to buy 
weapons. What happened to it? Do you see how everybody seems to have forgotten about that? One billion dollars down the drain into the pockets of corrupt Fulani rulers of the zoo. They are in the army. They are in the navy. They are in every head, everywhere you go to. A Fulani man must be at the helm of affairs. Be it customs, be it fire service, be it civil defense, be it army, be it police, be it navy. Everywhere Fulani men stealing and looting. And surprise, surprise, the head of um, EFCC is also a full man. So they don't arrest themselves. They keep looking for Jesus or Carlo and Desi and Madweke. Do you see the zoo? Those fighting corruption. None of the Yoruba newspapers can do an editorials asking, where did the one billion dollars go to? Nobody will ask. But I don't expect you to ask anywhere. You are all Nigerians. Very, very useless, I must say. Very, very useless. The corrupt brown envelope journalists you have in Nigeria, especially Channels TV, cannot ask Burata a simple question. What did you do with the one billion dollars you collected to buy arms? They won't say anything as long as they're in power. Do you know that Nigerians as a whole is more corrupt than Nigeria itself? Somebody wrote something very interesting which I had to bring to this very broadcast this evening because I think it's very, very important to give us a sense of um, perspective as to what it means to be a Nigerian. And the reason why anybody proudly saying to him or herself that they are a Nigerian or that they are Nigerians should be shot to death. That person is lower than a monkey in the forest. And I'm about to prove to you why. Somebody wrote, not me, that Nigeria is a land of generals without war. They have generals, Fulani generals, Awasa generals. Now ask yourself this question, what makes you a general? You must have been to war, commanded men in battle, isn't it? That's what makes you a general. I have an assignment for every one of you this evening. Go and dig out any battle that Buratai led. Very simple, isn't it? He is the chief of army staff, swaggering all over the place. Simple Boko Haram, he cannot defeat. If you ask him his achievement, he will say, We, we, we stormed the Sama for the Queen Omaya. We stormed the Big. I remember when I was at Kuja Prison. Every morning, they will fly their helicopter above my room in the prison. And I used to tell Benjamin Madubububu and um, David Mwamwesi that, do you know what they're doing? They said, no. I said, to them, they have flown a combat mission. Flying above my cell in the prison is a combat mission for them. That man will one day become a, a, a air vice marshal. If you ask him, where he conducted his operations, he will tell you, I flew to Kujia prison when Namda Khan was there. On a reconnaissance mission. Ask Buratai, have you led men in war before you became the chief of army staff? If so, where? And you'll be shocked that the man you made your army chief of staff, I'm sure he doesn't even know how to fire a pistol. But he's a general. Only in the zoo. Only in Nigeria. You say you have professors without any discovery. That's a Yoruba man, a senator. That said he's a PhD holder in genetics. Welcome. <laughs> but he came out to use his certificate to deceive some of you. To say that what Nam the can is saying can never plausibly be true because he said I implied that Buhari was cloned when that wasn't what I said the first thing he did was to flash his certificate 
I am a professor. He started to list out the schools that he attended. All of them. Like uh, Tinubu that went to Toronto University. You know, they list out all these things. They know nothing. I even saw Femi Adesino speaking on TV. He was as incoherent as somebody selling pepper at the Dioroko market. You see, that's what I said to you before. Some of these people, when they sit down and spend days and days going through their libraries and plagiarizing what other people may have done in the past to present to you, you say, oh, they're very intelligent. Put them on the spot. Bring the microphone to them and ask them questions. You see them fall to pieces. I, I looked at Femi Adeshona and I wept for the Zoom. This is somebody, a media advisor to the president, as incoherent, mumbling and stuttering his way through the interview. And tomorrow they will say he's educated, he's an intellectual. Professors without any discovery. I remember one man called Professor Dego King, based on you, I'll never forget. He took 10 million. I, people will, will, will be amazed as to how I remember all these things. He took 10 million dollars from Babangida. He said he was a professor of nuclear physics. We asked him, <laughs> nuclear physics in West Africa. <laughs> nuclear physics, yeah. He said, we say, then they asked him in Igwacha then, in all fairness, Babangida had a very spectacular plan for the Nigerian economy. I must be very honest. <laughs> but the idiots messed it up anyway. He said he will use, listen to this very carefully, nuclear bombardment to multiply the average yield of wheat in the zoo because then there was a problem with the protection of flour from abroad. Are you following what I'm saying? So, the Babangida was very desperate. He wanted, you know, for the zoo to be sufficient in wheat production. I'm sure even Babangida himself may have forgotten. This man collected mobilization fee in those days of $10 million to go and research on how to use nuclear rays to multiply the yield of wheat. Till today we heard nothing from him. But he's a professor. He's a professor in the zoo. These are, these are the ways the bamboo zoo you. Professor Emeritus, this and that. Ask him. Work him, what have you done in the past? What have you done before? Nothing. Nothing. Because they think we are stupid. They think we don't know what we are doing. Uh, but now we have found them out. We have found them out and we must continue. They have taken everything from the zoo. The only thing they can throw in your faces are dead certificates. Dead. Even Buhari had none before he died anyway. Before you become a politician, maybe in the UK you have to belong to the Labour Party because you believe in the masses, you believe in workers, or you're a conservative because you believe in, you know, living things the way they are. You know, in America you're a Democrat, a Republican, either you're a conservative or you're a liberal. In the Zoom, today they're in DPP. Tomorrow morning they're in APC. Next tomorrow they're in, uh, in PDP. And then uh, the other morning they have now marched to another group. These are positions in Nigeria. There is no ideology. None whatsoever. Some of you may have forgotten that by this time last year, I think Abubakar was in APC. Is that not true? Today he's in another party fighting APC. Everybody wants to get their hand at the honey, the tail of oil and gas money. That's all. They have nothing to offer. You know that. We all know that. They have nothing to offer you because they are politicians without ideology. Defecting from one party to the other, even above you. You know, three politicians with the help of um, IG of police went and they took over Akwaibom State House of Assembly. Three people only. They said, they asked them, why did you? They said, when we came into the house, we did not see the speaker. So we decided to take over and impeach the speaker. But how many of you? He said they only three. Hey. <laughs> Do you see why, why I call them zoo? And I call them zoo, they don't like it. But they are worse than animals, I'm telling you. Worse than animals they are. They have wealth without prosperity. The richest man in Africa is a dangote. But how about imagine they begging for food on the streets in Canada? 
poverty everywhere. The richest man is uh, Dangote. They have a private, you know, they want to live like you, but they have a yacht. Uh, they are traveling uh, along the coast. Uh, then the yacht wearing suit and tie. Spending all the money you have because all of you are foolish. The zoo has the highest concentration of public office looters in the world, of which the Fulani constitute 90%. Nobody steals more public funds than Fulani people, but you don't know this because you are daft. Your eyes are closed. You read what Yoruba journalists feed you. Most of them are Yoruba Muslims. They are loyal to the Fulani people. The Fulani are their gods. Some of you don't know that the Sultan of Sokoto is the religious leader of every Yoruba Muslim. Do you know that before? The, their loyalty is to the Sultan of Sokoto, not to the owner of Ife. Go and ask. What I give you here is authentic information. Go and check it. I said it's correct. Nobody steals more than them. Wealth without prosperity. All the richest people in the zoo are politicians, or those that politicians made. Nobody made their money through enterprise or share hard work. Those that did, you don't hear about them anymore. Who is the richest man in Yoruba? Is it not Tunubu? Was he a millionaire before he became governor? Was he a millionaire? I'm asking a simple question. Was Tunubu a millionaire? Do you expect his uh, newspaper, Nation, to criticize him? Do you expect TVC, the satellite TV station, to criticize him? He is their jagaban. He's stealing on their behalf. They won't criticize him. And if you try to, they say he's an elder. You don't criticize elders. My goodness me. Look at Oshomola and look at Ganduja. He's not the governor of Kano State. That took money in dollars. Bribery money in dollars. Has he been arrested? How many hours sir, full and people are being tried for corruption? You can't tell me. Because there is none. Absolutely none. And as you are pondering over that, ask yourself, how did Aisha Buhari make her money in oil and gas? Keep asking yourself that question. Before the end of this program, who knows you might <laughs> have some answers for us. They claim they are religious without piety. Some of them go as far as trying to make a fool of themselves in trying to make a mockery of my religion. If you don't know, let me tell you tonight. All of you who are thick in the head, let me tell you tonight. Jesus Christ is a Jew. Are you aware of that? Do you know that? Do you know Jesus is Jew? Do you know he's Jewish? If you are following Jesus Christ, it means you are also a Jew. Now he's seeking it, isn't it? I follow the religion of the ancients of my forefathers and my ancestors that worshipped only Elohim and no other. That's what I'm doing. You may not understand it because it's modern interpretation. It's scriptural and intellectual interpretation is found in the ethics of Judaism. If you so wish to call it that. This is the religion of the ancients. Christianity came from Judaism. If you don't know, let me educate you. The same way that every other church came from Roman Catholicism. That is also a fact. And if you do not know, and you are in Islam, it was Christians that formed Islam. Now, it's becoming clearer, isn't it? It's your coaching, Pure fact. The first wife of Muhammad was a Roman Catholic uh, nun. If you don't know, let me tell you. Research it very well. So when people talk rubbish, nonsense, bunkum, garbage, they don't know about. Before you understand what we are doing, please, I recommend you go to, you go to Eri, the land of Eri, Umweri and Aguleri. Then perhaps 
you can begin to understand what we are talking about because I don't I want to debate people who are intelligent not people with very empty brain with nothing to say and they think they can debate me no you can't before you proceed any further think and reason then you will understand my religion is religion of the ancients our ancestors the religion of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, and of Eri, of God. If you don't know where Obu God is, go to Umweri. Go to Aguleri. If you don't know the meaning of the star of David, you go to Aguleri. And find out, do your research and you read. Because if you challenge me, I will shred you to nothing. To pieces. I am educated. If you feel you're intelligent, you come and you debate me. If you last for two minutes, then I know that you're a human being. Because I'll reduce you to nothing. You have courts without justice. A court where a judge will tell you my hands are tied. And next year you go and vote. Criminals without fear, they steal in your face and they ask you, what can you do? Can't you ask Tinubu how he made his money? No, you won't ask because he's Jagaban. Do you see how foolish you are? They have history without glory. Our land, our Nigeria. Nigeria only came into existence less than 60 years ago. How old is your father and your grandfather? And which nation did they belong to before Nigeria was formed? Any day you answer that question, your stupidity will begin to take shape in front of you. You know, some of us are daft. We don't even know it. There is a way you reason very well and properly. Your ignorance will begin to form in your face. You can now see it very well. Here we preach the truth. You have heroes without honor. Like Buratai, you go and you slaughter innocent people. Women and children. In Biafra land. Shia protesters in Kaduna. You slaughter them. You say you're a general. But at the moment you see Boko Haram, you run away and begin to complain about lack of arms. You have nothing. Intellectuals without thought. Every, every garbage is an intellectual. When I see fools who cannot teach one decent sentence together, they say they're intellectuals. One day I will grab one of them in a debate. I'll debate you either in Igbo or in English. When I speak Igbo language, I add no is or was. Intellectuals, my fruit. You are an intellectual, there is no electricity, no running water, you are an intellectual. You can't build ordinary road, you are an engineer. You are a civil engineer. Ordinary bridge, you can't in your village, you cannot build. You are an engineer waiting for Julius Becker to come and build roads for you. And for Setraco to come and build roads for you. And you say you're an engineer. You're an intellectual. No more cocoa. They have schools where they don't learn. They are universities. Anyway, if you don't have a proper washroom, how can you be able to study properly? How can you be able to learn? Terrorists without identity. I love whoever put this together. It's very brilliant. They have hunger even without famine. They have looters who are seeking to return to power and you will vote for them. Somebody steals your money. After being a governor, they go to Senate and you still vote for them. I, I don't understand this. Integrity without performance. Billionaires. Dangote. Without any business. They do money laundering. That is one. Uh, uh, some of them you have in, is it Rwanda? You ask them, how did you come into a oil business or to come to own an oil block? Like Dan Juma, from a general to an owner of oil blocks. I just don't understand it. So as Colin Powell is now, he will go to Texas and he own an oil well. Because he was a former general. Former defense minister. Or former uh, secretary of state. Do you see how people live in Africa? That, that is why when white people see us, they look at us as if we are, we are vermin. We are our own downfall. The reason why we are the way we are is because of our level of stupidity. Black people are stupid. 
they cannot reason very well. Anybody who reasons properly will be able to ask himself, how come Buhari was started in 2015, all of a sudden, Saraki started on him? They don't ask such questions. How come Buhari's ear was torn? The ear of Jibril is not. No, it doesn't matter. You are saying it doesn't matter because your brain, the central processing unit, the capacity of your brain to digest complex information relating to identity is missing. You cannot reason properly. We in IPOB, we will no longer have regard for anybody who comes up to speak nice words, to say beautiful things, only to turn around and begin to speak like a traitor. We will not condone or tolerate such people and it won't happen anymore. I will not mention anybody's name again here or praise anybody again because once I do, the zoo will go and meet you and give you money. You start talking like an idiot. It will not happen here anymore. Never, ever, ever. People will no longer make money with the name of IPOB. They say, oh, he's close to Nam the Khan. Uh, let's embarrass him. Let's give him money. So he will say something against Namdekanu and people will move away from him. That is rubbish. I don't beg people to come with me. I speak the truth. If you love the truth, you will come. If you're a child of darkness, a child of Lucifer, you will not come because you don't like the truth. And next time you're traveling along uh, the, the untired road in your village, you will fall into a nearby stream and you will drown. And by the time you know it, very little fish in the stream will come and pluck your eyes out. You don't know that's what. Do you know about the car that fell into the river for the past one week that has been there with passengers on board? Because people don't reason very well. That is why they die like wild animals that they are. Ordained and forever ignorant are those who cannot distinguish between two people. You are an ignorant person ordained with natural stupidity. So you're telling me if I go back to my house, I cannot differentiate between my two sons. Is that what you're telling me? I can no longer tell Nemeka from when I became. Is that what you're telling me? I no longer can tell between my two children who is who. I asked you, go back to the picture of Aisha Buhari two Sundays ago. Those that, um, those that, the man that escorted Aisha to the launch of the next level of APC. Does that man look like Buhari to you? Huh? I don't know. But, uh, don't Yoruba journalists, don't they have eyes? I mean, Yoruba journalists, don't they have eyes? Can't you tell if the man that has squatted Aisha out answer a simple question? Is that man Buhari or not? And then your stupidity will begin to unravel before you. Nobody can be old one day and the next day they are young. We knew what Buhari looked like. And we now know what Jubri looks like. These days they take pictures from 10 miles away. Because they know IPOB is watching. Take pictures and publish. And then we analyze that for you. We have presented before the world numerous and irrefutable evidence about who Jubril is and how they cannot be Buhari. It should be clear to the rest of humanity that even I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. Atik Kwebubaka knows that Jubril is not Buhari. Everybody knows. Saraki, everybody knows. The Sultan knows. Abba Kiyari that recruited, he knows. Nobody can come out to challenge what is unchallengeable. But because a full animal needs to be in power always, 
That is why they allow this charade and this nonsense to continue. There is nobody. I, when I say it now, they say, oh, he's full of this, his Biafra thing. You know, that's what they say about me. But he I wanted to play Dora Akonyeli's third force, I would say. It was Dora Akonyeli that made Jonathan's presidency possible. One Igbo woman, brave Igbo woman, made it possible. There is no Yoruba person who can stand up to say to, today to speak the truth that Jubril is not Buhari. But this woman did it and paid with her life. That's how we are. We don't give a damn. We damn the consequences when speaking the truth. Please, are you ready? Please go ahead and pray, play Dora Akunili. The next person you hear is that of Dora There are people around the president that are not telling us the truth. And it has happened for over 19 days. And most Nigerians are worried. There is confusion, there is anxiety, there is tension in the system. We should not shy away from that. That is the truth. The tension got so heightened that at the point, the National Assembly and the Governor's Forum saved us from even getting into deeper crisis by making the president acting president. Then suddenly, these people arranged without informing the acting president and brought in the president in the dead of the night and that caused even more tension in the system and thereafter went on to do a few things that get people totally disorganized and wondering what is going on now I believe that things are normalizing but a few things still need to happen. We are praying that our president either comes out to talk to us, to completely douse the tension, or if he is not in a position to do so, because it's not a crime for anybody to be sick, for people around, around him to come out and tell us his true state of health. Or at least allow the acting president to see him and talk with him. You see, these things are very important because the acting president would now be able to talk to us as ministers and tell us what he discussed with him. Because if we don't get the truth, we will continue to dwell on rumors. And these rumors are creating more problems for us because the stories that are coming up are really very discomforting and I wouldn't want to repeat some of them. And why are they coming up? Because we don't have information. I am Minister of Information of Nigeria, but I don't have information. So when people say certain things, I'm not even able to say, no, this is not correct. How can I say this is not correct when I don't know the truth? Well, it's not just a slight on the acting president, it's also a slap on the faces of almost 150 million Nigerians. In fact, what they say to all of us is, all of you go to hell. And it is very sad. But be that as it may, I think we should try and get over that. What is important is that uh, our president is back. We should pray for his recovery. We should also uh, pray for the acting president to uh, effectively uh, manage uh, the ship of the nation. And uh, on the other hand, to pray that God gives us the solution to the impending uh, political crisis in the country. Because there is political crisis. We shouldn't pray. Yes, it's very, very clear, isn't it? What Professor Dolanguini was saying. She's dead now. The same scenario that played out before the ascension of Jonathan is playing out today again. People are lying and burying their heads in the sand like the proverbial ostrich, not willing, neither are they able to confront the truth. Had it not been for this very brave lady, what is playing out now would have played out then. I played this very clip that people may know the level of sacrifice required 
when you are pursuing the truth. Dora Kunili then said, these people, who are those people she was referring to? The same political cabal of the Fulani Caliphate. They are the ones now managing Jubril because they want Fulani people to remain in power. But we know it's not going to be possible. We know it's not possible. Mark my words. It is not possible. Come out and tell us the true state of the health of the dead Yaradua. She said, did anybody say such a thing during this time around of Buhari before he died? Nobody told you anything. Nobody knows what that man or knew what he died from. You are the ones paying for his medical bills, but you are not allowed to know what is happening to him or what happened to him. At least Jonathan was the acting president. Osibajo was made the acting coordinator. That tells you all you need to know about Nigeria. What am I saying? What I'm saying is the absence of a Biafran. Now, can you see why Buhari made sure that it's only Fulani men that he's surrounded with, his kitchen cabinet? Those in the know are all Fulani. And there is no way they are going to relinquish or give up power. Never. And why are we not contesting it? Because we lack the courage to. Because those have, that should be telling us the truth, they lack the courage to tell us the truth. Those of you that come out to say that Jubil is Buhari, that Buhari is not dead, you are going to cover your faces in shame very soon. I assure you. You know, for us, timing is everything. When I do things, I time it precisely. The timing will shock each and every one of you. If you cannot see that Jubril cannot address you, Jubril cannot take off his hat, nor take a picture in his suit, which he should have done, considering that they're going into an election period, Jubril doesn't speak the Fulani local dialect for Fude. This same Jubril can never address you. He can never go on, go on a walkabout. He can never attend a rally. They are hiding his left ear from you. But you insist. Some of you, out of ignorance and madness, as you speak, have decided to stick with the fact that Jubril is not Buhari. So they can keep stealing oil and gas money, which is why they are in power in the first place. It is very, very necessary to notify every Nigerian that bothers to know that the only thing that can save you is a revolution. You must join IPOB in this very revolution to usher in a new order for yourselves. For us, we are Biafrans, we are going. But we want to allow you to take advantage of this very time in our history to also set yourselves free. The fraudulent concealment of this civil enterprise perpetrated by Fulani men. These Fulani caliphate in Nigeria cannot last very long. You have to make a decision tonight either to be part of this very revolution or to remove yourself and keep campaigning for politicians and for people to go and vote. You must make up your mind. Voting is incompatible with the revolutionary mindset that have now possessed us. What we want is a revolution. Not restructuring, not change for the sake of it, but a total and comprehensive revolution that will upturn the old corrupt order and usher in a new one. Under the grace of the Most High Elohim, under the grace of the Most High Elohim. All of those who are accomplices to this very fraud, those that knew, those that know about Jubril but have decided to keep quiet, you will not go scot-free. We have information 
at the disposal of our intelligence, the M branch intelligence network. Everybody who is a politician in the zoo, a high level politician, they are all aware of the contract that Jubril entered into to masquerade himself as Buhari. What Jubril has brought is definite chaos. Under this Jubril, Fulani headsmen went about rampaging, killing, raping, and maiming people. This thing from Sudan. Under him. That is why they are shielding him. But he will go to jail. Don't say I didn't warn you. He is going to prison. And he must be tried. The restoration of our dignity as a people must come via a revolution, nothing else. Nothing else, not through voting. You can vote from now till the kingdom come. Nothing will change. Only if you are part of the criminal gang seeking to loot people and continue to impoverish those with nobody to speak for them. This very regime of fascism and impunity must come to an end. This spate of lying and deception and all that devilish antecedents of this APC regime must be brought to an end. Or else we are in trouble. Everybody will be in trouble, I assure you. If they can come with such determination and the front to slaughter and maim people all over the place. Imagine what will happen if you allow them to use the pretext of an electioneering period campaign and voting to extend the stay of Jubril in office. They will slaughter all of you. That I assure you. Yemi Oshibanjo is incapable of speaking the truth. And he is a pastor. So we also told that Femi Adesino is also a pastor. They are pastors and they lie with so much ease that seriously I am concerned. Seriously, we are concerned. I should be. Everybody holding our people from a near we must set them free or else they invite a greater calamity. They are inviting something that will consume all of them. We know what happened between Boko Haram and the zoo army. Something greater will happen if they don't leave us alone and set our people free. They label us as terrorists. They know that we have no arms. We have absolutely nothing. They cook up unsubstantiated and unpardonable lies against us just to justify their illegal imprisonment and incarceration of IPOB family members. Those who are arrested are held in communicado for years and months without any trial. Any day we go crazy and decide to challenge them, we don't want the world to hold us responsible. The zoo must be held responsible. It is on record that Buhari, the dead Buhari now, Jubril and the Shibajo government, has not secured not a single conviction against anybody involved in the killing of innocent people, including army officers that shot and killed over a thousand Shia protesters in Zaria. None has been brought to book. The constitution is not, in, is not being maintained. Nobody follows it, because if they did, by now all those arrested at the Navy would have been released. But there are some Igbo people that call themselves leaders who are behind this very evil to round up people and lock, and lock them up, having not committed any crime. They went to a quiet bomb to initiate havoc and chaos. They went to eat watcher to arrest people who are training for a neighborhood watch. They want to take over Aquaibom, Cross River, and River State by all means necessary. And all of you are sitting down, folding your arms, and not challenging this very evil going on now in our land. They arrest our people and they parade them. These are businessmen, these are shop owners at Inewi. 
If you're close to these people, ask them to release these innocent traders. They're not part of IPOB. But everybody who is from Biafra land is an indigenous person of Biafra. And we must evidently watch out for them and make sure that we protect their interest. They arrested 34 persons, paraded them, which is against the law. To parade people is against the law, but the police keeps doing this because nobody holds them to account. There is something called innocent before proven guilty. But in the zoo, they find you guilty before you can prove your innocence, which is Sharia law. But some of you don't know that you're actually practicing Sharia law. Very, very sad indeed. We have all the names of the people they've arrested, and we are asking them to release all of them. We are asking them to set them free and focus all their policing efforts against Boko Haram and Fulani headsmen and leave our people alone. Many people have written about this. Inter society have written about this. And others are also commenting about this. They must focus their energies there. Let them go and fight the terrorists in the north and leave us alone. Some of you don't know the involvement of Buhari and his regime in the recruitment, in the financing, and in the empowering of Boko Haram. Or should I say empowerment of Boko Haram. Some of you are aware that some South Africans, some mercenaries said they wanted to fight Boko Haram. Do you know who stopped them? Buhari asked them not to fight Boko Haram when he was alive. Do you know that? I'm sure now you know. Will anybody ask questions? No, I am not sure they are going to ask any questions at all. At all. When Boko Haram are killing people in the north, no northern politician talks about war. But any time Niamwodo goes out to speak, he will tell you, oh, we want Biafra as well, but not through war. And you ask him, but who is fighting a war? Is our agitation in any way warlike? He will tell you yes. Then, if our agitation is war, what do you think that Fulani headsmen are doing? What do you think that Boko Haram are doing? And all the rest of them. He cannot answer because he wants to be a minister in Atiku's government. It is only war that is talking about war. That is his justification for Operation Python Dance. His only narrative is war, war. Any, anywhere he goes to speak, it is war. You know, that's why I said. That I'm a man of peace, but when I speak, they are for war. He is the only person talking about war all the time. Others are talking about referendum. Some genuinely enlightened people from outside are talking about a return to the autonomy that was embedded in the United States Constitution. Anywhere he goes to, it is about war. War and war. Who he's fighting with, I have no idea. Every day, steadily, he is yapping about war. Anywhere he goes to, he talks about war because he's an apologist for the Fulani genocides. He is, he is a lap dog for the Fulani Caliphate. He promised his Fulani master that he keep on shouting war and war and war until they begin to believe his lies. All his co-conspirators, those of them with a hand, in instigating Operation Pattern Dance, we will pay very dearly for it at the right time. And we are not going to vote for anybody. There will be no voting in our land. We have roadblocks in the north. They don't have any roadblocks. We will promise to get rid of all the roadblocks. And all your governors are not saying anything about it. They extort money from us. When we refuse to give them money, they kill us. And nothing is done about it. And that empowers them and they keep doing it all the time. They deploy soldiers to our street. Every time a Fulani man must be in charge of everything, be it police, be it air force, everything is only Fulani people. People we are arrested around Okibwe. Everywhere you go in Biafra is arrest, 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 arrest. Because we have no guns. Are they arresting Boko Haram? The answer is no. Instead, they are giving them army uniform and integrating them into the army. They have arrested our people again around Law Panther and charged them. People who we are going for something totally unrelated to IPOB activities, we are arrested and published in the newspapers. That is what 
we are facing every blessed day. But we must continue. We must continue to march forward. It has been proven beyond every conceivable doubt that those who are the cowards are those of them in the zoo army. Because when Boko Haram came calling, they all ran away. We have some announcements to make this very evening. And we must make it because freedom fighting is not a child's play. If you know you cannot handle it, then please do not be a part of this very family. There is no emergence of a new nation without the backing of the Security Council or a very powerful state. The reason why we lost the war between 67 and 70 was because we had no serious backers. That is a fact. If you don't know your history, please go and check it over and over again. We need friends. We need allies. We need supporters all over the world. And we are making sure that we get that before we march. And I must also repeat that we will boycott elections unless they are prepared to give us a date for a referendum. My type of freedom fighting comes without compromise. None whatsoever. I will sacrifice everything sacrificeable as I'm sacrificing right now to make sure that Biafra comes. It doesn't matter what people say or do because I know for definite that Biafra is going to come. I am not your typical black African man. I am not. I don't reason like them and I can never reason like them. That is why IPOB is different because we reason differently. There is no developed black African country without help. I said there is none. No black country is developed. Even South Africa is going backwards. Go and check it and you will see. And I am determined by the grace of the Almighty that Biafra must set and be an example for others to copy and to follow. It doesn't matter what people say or what they do, Biafra is going to come. Nobody is under any force or compulsion to be part of this glorious IPOB family. For you to be IPOB means you're privileged. It means you can reason like a human being. You are not an animal dwelling in the zoo called Nigeria. People come and people will go, but IPOB shall remain. We are not going anywhere. We don't dine with traitors or deal makers. If you're a deal maker, go and be making your deals. We want our freedom and that's what we're going to get. You see that we get it or we are perishing the process. We will not give an inch or a quarter. Not everybody will understand the spiritual dimension of this very struggle. It is highly spiritual what we are doing. If you don't understand it, just keep your mouth shut. Watch and see what is going to happen. Without Chukwu Kikabi Ahmad, there will be no Biafra. I can assure you of that. That was why we lost the war in 1970. Because Chukwu Kikabi Ahmad was not at the center of what we are doing. And it's a mistake I am not prepared to repeat. Be rest assured. This evening, mobilization units will be created in every state. I said in every state. We have saturated the towns. We must go into the rural areas and the villages. Every state coordinator must provide support and assistance to Abel and his team to make sure that we permeate every strata of our society. That IPOB is everywhere. Not when you come to towns and you, you see an existing zone, you cut it into two and tell me you're integrating a new unit. That doesn't make any sense to me. Go into the villages. Go into our hometowns and establish IPOB family meetings. I want Cross River, Bayelsa, and Delta states, those closer to the coast, to become saturated with IPOB family units everywhere. That is how we are going to paralyze and shock the zoo come next year, February 19th. We must have new families everywhere. Nobody should open any unit without handing it over to the state coordinator. Nobody should. If you are going to open a new unit, you must hand it over to the state coordinator and make sure it is well accounted for. Everybody, every unit in every state must be accounted for. I repeat, must be accounted for. From this very night, from this very night, BSS no longer exists the way we know it. I have assumed the overall command of BSS and nobody, anybody referring to himself 
or herself as BSS from tonight will be in very serious trouble because BSS are not meant to be seen. We hear about them, we don't see them. So there is nothing like BSS. For anybody to parade himself or herself as BSS, that means they are not part of this very glorious family because things are happening. We are restructuring our intelligence gathering to make it far more relevant for this phase of this very battle that we're going into. People will hear about BSS, but we will not see them anymore. So anybody writing, parading, or talking about himself or herself as BSS, he's doing so on their own. And no longer part of this very family. A new commander will head the BSS, and that will be announced very soon. And that is the only public information you have about BSS from now onwards. BSS, as I said earlier, is under my direct command. And no human being is allowed to assume any position within that very organization within our struggle without my say so. No meeting or meetings of BSS will be convened from now onwards until I announce who the overall head will be. Every BSS officer and personnel should join the nearest IPOB Central Security Command because nomination to the new BSS will come from officers and heads of the various security units. No person or persons, I repeat, must parade themselves as leaders of BSS until I announce such a person on air. This evening also I'm announcing that you watch our frontiers is completely dissolved. There is nothing called frontiers again in you watch from tonight. It doesn't exist. Biafra and Coordinator Ketuku will work on, assimilati on assimilating them into the new structure in Iguacha. IPOB Enforcement Unit must ensure that that name no longer exists. Frontiers, it doesn't exist from tonight. David Njoko is the one and only coordinator. I recognize and I know in Iguacha. Every group, unit, or family meeting must be under his leadership. There will be no nicknames at all. Whatever Iketupu Ugwa says is what goes. You must understand that. Nothing like frontiers from tonight. And that brings us to the end of our broadcast this very evening. By the grace of Elohim, we shall be here next week, Saturday, to continue the propagation of this very gospel. If anybody is telling you to do anything else other than what you are told on this very platform, you must not only ignore them, but also avoid them. Our mission is to crumble the zoo, and that must happen. Because Biafra must come. We have no other choice. We have no other hope. The only thing that matters to us is freedom. And that freedom is what we are pursuing. And that is what we are going to get. And Chukuk Kabiamu will guide, sustain, bless and keep each and every one of you. As we walk tirelessly hard towards the restoration of the kingdom of heaven upon this face of this very earth. And that Biafra must come and we shall all inherit it. Not just for this generation, but for posterity to come. That the name of the Most High Elohim may be blessed, adored, and praised now and forevermore. He said, He said, He said.